To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 12, Abraham versus other founding fathers. Behold, we have arrived to the creation of the Hebrew people. Let's reiterate the obvious. The Hebrew Bible was written of by and for the Hebrew people, those that lived in the ancient East 3,000 years ago. The first Hebrew is Abraham, the founding father, the first patriarch, the one who was promised a piece of land, henceforth to be known as the Promised Land, that stretches from the Sinai Peninsula and the Mediterranean to the east, to the Euphrates River to the west. Abraham is not from that piece of land. He has never even set foot in there. It is a critical part of his story. He's a foreigner. So who is Abraham? What made him so special? What does the Bible tell us about him and his character? What does he do? What are his exploits? Founding fathers in general are crucial for the shared identity of peoples, be they ancient or modern. We will post several episodes about Abraham, Abraham starting today with a breakdown of his character as a patriarch, comparing him to other well-known founding fathers of Greeks, Christians, Muslims, ancient Egyptians, Chinese and more. The similarities and differences would shed a lot of light on the biblical story, its writers and audience. Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. Okay, Avraham. Avraham Avinu. Avram. Avram. First, he was named Avram in one of the stories that we will get to. Uh, God uh, put an H in his <laughs> in his name <laughs> because uh, God loves the the sound of ha. Yahweh. 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 So what does it mean, Avram? Avraham. Great father. Uh, literally, it means great father. Avram. Yeah. High father, great superior father. Superior father. Superior maybe. father. Yeah. And Avraham just has the H of the... Yeah. Between, <laughs> between branding him yeah. like cattle. <laughs> okay, so what is your main takeaway of this founding father? Of a meaningless people in the middle of nowhere, living in the shadow of uh, giants. There's two takeaways from him. Uh, one, his character is extremely naive in terms of he is not a conniving character. He's not a liar, a lying character. He also is not a brave character in terms that he, he has some kind of a conflict with some kind of a monster or some kind of a <laughs> enemy. No. S- so he's rooted really in some kind of a realistic form of storytelling except from the parts that he speaks with Yahweh. And even when he speaks with his deity, he's kind of naive, he's he's trying to negotiate about... uh, No, I disagree, I don't see him as naive, but maybe we'll solve that later. later. When he he comes across a foreign land, uh, he lies and tells that uh, his wife is actually his sister, but it comes from from a a naive psychology, like uh, a passive psychology, it's not in order to inflict, infiltrate the kingdom or in order to make a, some kind of a trick to yeah. whatever. It's a silly trick that doesn't work and then he does it again. Yeah, <laughs> he does it, it does it twice and even his uh, son will get to it later, <laughs> does it uh, again. He comes to a foreign land. He thinks that in this foreign land, it's okay to murder the husband and take his wife. So he lies to protect his wi- himself. Himself. And he says that his wife is actually his sister. So then they take his sister without killing him. And then bad times come to their land. (laughs) (laughs) And they discover that they actually married, uh, the king discovered that he married a married woman. And then he's he's apologizing. And and she's married to a man that has been given uh, superpowers through this deity. Chosen by God. Even not superpowers. Chosen by God. He is known as a very sacred man in the land, a very probably respected and honorable man commands respect like this patriarchal respect and that that is the second takeaway that the political status of our hero is not the top of the hierarchy making decisions that influence peoples yeah he garners respect from the most powerful people because he's been chosen by by the most powerful king ever there's this clerical priestly point of view that even though you are the king and you have uh, he's not the king ah the other one okay even you Avimelech (laughs) (laughs) 
the name is uh, very uh, <laughs> telling, Av, Av, father. So it's father king against the big father. Exactly. Av, Ram, great father against Avi, Melech, king father. <laughs> so you, the king father, <laughs> Avi, Melech, has the right, according to the laws of the land, to take another man's wife and kill the man. It's, it's, it's okay, he's the king. But Abraham has a, uh, a better superpower than him. He's been chosen by God. So here's the... Somebody has his back. Yeah. He's talking like someone who has someone ar- uh, behind him holding a big gun. And why I'm saying it... Exactly. And why I'm, I'm saying that he's naive in terms of if we're now going to compare him to other father figures or patriarchs, and then we'll see the difference. And in patriarchs here, I think we mean that they appear in some sort of genealogy of people. Not necessarily. I think they have to be like super meaningful in creating uh, an identity for people. And some people derive their own identity by connecting yes. themselves to their lineage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some they are yeah. like... Uh, oh, we can also add... Uh, Ragnar Lofbrok. Ragnar, Ragnar Lofbrok. <laughs> but okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, who is Avram. So he is basically like a Bedouin person yeah. that has like a large posse of slaves. Mm-hmm. Uh, cattle mm-hmm. moves around mm-hmm. always pitches his tent everywhere yeah for me he doesn't even have a clear character he's kind of like a blank slate which is also a recurring theme it's not as much uh, as noah who is basically just like a ghost or something or like a machine that mm-hmm. builds an ark but the story starts with yahweh telling him go yeah no exposition at all you don't know anything about him who is this person you don't know why he was chosen they don't say like noah that it was it was tzaddik it was a righteous person in his generation he's like sensible pragmatic he's like a shrine builder extraordinaire (laughs) (laughs) goes everywhere builds shrines kind of so what you mentioned about about respect is kind of like a mensch yeah maybe there's some kind of a cultural indicators that we are missing because we're not part of the culture that yes for example there's this this scene where he has visitors there's an emphasis on uh, hospitality because the, the conditions are like space. So you basically have, uh, if you, yes, if you yes. go and you see a tent, you basically have like a space station where yes. you can uh, refill your cameras. Yeah. And, and you'll go there even if it's the Russian space station. You'll exactly, be allowed to go there. Exactly. Because and they won't hurt, hurt you while you're there. Yeah. Like, come on, we're in space. Contractual uh, yeah. agreement. It's because for survival because yeah. you all need it. Yeah, because you yourself, you migrate because uh, you are desert people. And mm. And you yourself will need the hospitality and goodwill of the people that you were, uh, you approach. So I, I don't know. He he's, he's he's kind of like a clan leader, basically yeah. going around, yeah. right, with his clans, like because you know he did something and somebody said, "Okay, I'll pay you for that." And he's like, "No, I don't want any, anybody yeah. to say that I got money from you just from Yahweh, but you have to pay yeah. my associates." Yeah, it's a padre familia. <laughs> He is, is, if you want to imagine a powerful figure that is not a king and he, he has respect from his uh, surroundings, as, then yeah. And also he does like uh, the covenant of the pieces. That's like the most un-Jewish ceremony that you can imagine. Ah, okay. That's like super voodoo shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, wow. Yeah. Doesn't look like anything that you know of that is Jewish or monotheistic or unrelated yeah. whatsoever and also he really dislikes the local women in canine <laughs> Knan, Eretz Knan doesn't <laughs> like the local woman doesn't want his son to marry a local he's really uh, that's like his dying wish uh, yeah, yeah. another thing about uh, this uh, about this Abraham fellow so he does all kinds of things that are kind of objectively uncool like timelessly uncool but he always has the best reasons ever to do it. So he sleeps with his slave when he has a wife. So obviously that's uncool. That's accepted, but that's, you know, it creates tensions with your wife. It's not nice, but his wife asked him to yeah. do it. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. He says, okay, I will sleep with this young woman. Thank you, my 90-year-old <laughs> wife. Okay, I will accept it. And he almost murders his son, but God told him to do it. Yeah, then that's the best reason. Yeah, I would kill my son if God told me to do it. <laughs> Don't mess with God. <laughs> <laughs> and here, I think it's if you want yeah, to decipher the the people who <laughs> who imagined Abraham, 
there weren't there weren't any tradition of like character building so the moment that you say abraham and it's a well-known probably in that area well-known name or well-known father that some some you know city states over there their ancestry is from his lineage through blah 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 and then they they don't don't really animate him but they expand his universe <laughs> let's say <laughs> and they imagine like the most respectable man that you know from your neighborhood from your day-to-day -day life that guy you know yeah. with the with the with the wives and with the slaves and with the servants and with the property but he's a well respected man okay. well he's touched by god you know him he's yes. a but it's not like you're not in awe of him like a, like he's also accessible he's like an everyman yeah exactly he's a down-to-earth guy down to earth yes he's not high born no. he's not son of kings yeah and he's Unlike not others uh, yeah. yeah and he's not the son of god and he, he's just a it's some kind of a new <laughs> a, a new character it's like uh, it's like all those all the people that uh, told the story of abraham got tired of all those uh, stories about heroes who speak with gods and defeat death and yeah and trick people and they they wanted they they, they they didn't have any representation <laughs> of the clerical beta male who watched <laughs> from a, from aside all of his uh, classmates uh, achieve glory <laughs> while he doesn't get any burp <laughs> and he's uh, you know very frustrated and he's not going to get a piece of poo so he's going to get a piece of land exactly and he says you think you have the, all the poop and all the gold but uh, yeah. god is with me <laughs> okay we haven't mentioned abraham not only is he not strong particularly strong or particularly smart or particularly yeah. wise he's also an elderly an elderly person yeah he's like 80 yeah this is your founding father an 80 year old man yeah but maybe 80 back then was quite young if you compare that to his forefathers that reached 600 and but all the other founding fathers are young in yeah, prime. yeah, yeah. Because it was after the days of Noah, and you have a cap of 120 years. <laughs> but why can't we meet Abraham when he's 20? That's interesting. It's just like when he has uh, a lot of energy. Yeah. So about how Abraham is not a super defined character that actually makes him incorporatable. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. You. Everybody. Everybody can. Uh, when you have a blank character, you can fill in those blanks yourself. So ab about the cultural gap, I was thinking. We cannot know if Avraham is basically the best version of the Hebrews, imagine, or it's like a fantasy and it signifies something that we are lacking, that we would like to be, but we're not. Like, for example, how Bollywood uh, depicts the relationship between love and marriage mm -hmm. in its movies. Mm. Marriage is based on love and love leads to marriage, mm. in contrast to the arranged marriage, mm. which is the prevailing custom. Mm. So while almost everybody is getting married because their parents made a deal with other parents, almost all of mm. the love stories in Bollywood yeah. are love marriage. Yeah. So the prominence of love marriages in the movies is kind of a release valve for something that is lacking in this society. If you, if you watch uh, Bollywood movies 3,000 years in the future, you might say, wow, wow those Indians, <laughs> wow, they, uh, they are really in love and they're always marrying for some greater love and yeah. like bucking traditions. And uh, even though their parents told them, they still got ahead and married. Yeah, and got really married. And love, it's the opposite. And rich Americans, they're actually heroes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, to save, the, they try to save the world, actually. <laughs> I, I said all this just to make the point that Abraham might be the best version of a Hebrew, a respected and respectful person. But he also might be how the Hebrews would like to be, but they know they're not. A release valve. That is kind of a, let's say, <laughs> uh, quite a modern phenomenon that arts are some kind of a release valve against establishment. They weren't meant to be art. They were meant to be stories that people mm. thought was real. It, it's not like a, in Greek theater, they take well-known stories well-known characters and they animate them and there's some kind of a ritual in it probably in its nascent in the when it started the greek theater which was some kind of a ritualistic enactment yes. but later when it became more yeah. 
I don't, I don't know, modern or generation past. And yeah. Uh, so it's like there's a distance yeah. between the reality and what you're portraying yeah. in theater, and that distance is art. Exactly. So another thing about uh, Avraham, he's very argumentative. And the way that he's arguing with his God, he's very annoying. <laughs> he's a nudnik. <laughs> so I feel that when he talks to Yahweh, basically God tells him, go, there's a land there, I promise you. Yeah. I will show it to you. Yeah. And then God promises all the way, again, yeah. promises again and again and yeah. again. It's like as if he's a bit scared that this guy is going to leave the cult because he's the only one he's got. <laughs> and, and when they're arguing, so God wants to de destroy uh, Sodom. Sodom. And then Abraham says, Abraham says, okay, but what if there are like 50 righteous people there? Yeah. Still going to kill everybody? He said, no, no. If there are 50, then yeah. no. said, okay, 40. Said, okay, 40, then no. Okay, 30. I feel like he has some leverage <laughs> I think, I, over I, it's Yahweh. A, it's interesting that because I imagine this thing completely different. <laughs> okay, It's not me. like, uh, okay, 40. Okay, so it's like, okay, then 40, please, 40. Oh, you know what? 40. <laughs> okay, 30, 30, 30. I, I feel his anxiety. Anxiety. I don't see his connivingness and like, uh, you know, let's, let's not be anti-Semitic, anti but his uh, <laughs> negotiation <laughs> skills, uh, pricing, uh, you know, uh, okay, for the shackles. <laughs> He's like a lawyer who, you know, taking care of his client. Okay, so we don't want to go into Jewish stereotypes. I will say that Abraham is like a lawyer. <laughs> okay. That's an excellent point. Uh, go on. And uh, he's speaking to a judge, a very uh, judgmental, uh, uh, very scary judge. <laughs> and uh, he's negotiating, but I don't think it's some kind of a conniving negotiation. He got him down to like to 10. To 10. If yeah. he can find 10 righteous people, yeah. then you shouldn't destroy the city. And maybe it's even uh, some kind of a storytelling uh, trope that uh, to emphasize the fact that there weren't really even 10 righteous people in Gomorrah. Uh -huh. So ah, okay, to make sure that yeah. you know that God, that Yahweh, maybe even Abraham knew it. So it's not like he's taking care of his client; he's like uh, hedging his, uh, you know, bet, moral bet. Yeah, he's, he maybe he believes himself that there's not even uh, twenty people. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of biblical proportions on all podcasting platforms.